All right, team. This is Dr. Michael McCarthy, and we're picking right up where we left off with the demo for ACS number two, where we imported data, and then we used auto field to correct the variable types. And of course, with each tool, we have a browse function. So here we are, a demo ACS number three. I just saved it as a different file. Now we'll look at this data investigation tab to take a closer look and explore our data as part of the EDA process. The data investigation tab enables us to take a very close look at all the different parts of our data. The one I want us to focus on first is the field summary. And if you want to make it part of your favorites, there's a little star that becomes available in the corner. As soon as you hover over any of them, you can select and deselect the star and make it part of your favorites. So I'll select it and we can look into favorites and you can see it's added to the end. But back to the data investigation tab. The field summary tab, and it gives me a little introduction to it. Produce a concise summary report of descriptive statistics for the selected data columns. Well, this sounds exactly what I want for this EDA process. But let's dig a little bit further. Let's take a look at the example. And it actually opens up a new workflow on a separate tab to help me understand exactly what's happening. Because this is the first time we've had data coming in and three options for the data coming out. And as we learn, there are different outputs and they each do a different function. The O output puts the table in the results window. The R output puts a static report in the configuration window on the left. And the I output puts an interactive dashboard. You notice that for the R and the I outputs, they recommend a browse function. Now we're back at our demonstration canvas. I'm going to grab the field summary and drag it to the canvas. And you can see how it tried to connect, but it was too far. But that's okay. I can easily overcome this by grabbing the output of the auto field and connecting it to the input of the field summary. And in order to put a browse on each of them, I'll put a right click and I come down to all browses and a browse comes on each output, the O, the R, and the I. And I come over to the configuration, select the, the tool again. Here is the input and the out, they call it the incoming and the outgoing, the auto field and the three browses. And they're numbered six, seven, and eight. Here's the place where I can customize the label, descriptive statistics. And if I wanted to, I could click on the help, and this will take me to a web page where there's more information about the field tool. So the most important thing is that I select the fields I want to analyze. I can select all here or none. Sometimes it's better to select all and then deselect the ones you don't want. But I'm just gonna select a few for demonstration purposes. You can see also for big data sets, we can also opt for a sample. So I come up here and I save and I run. And then we have our different outputs and it tells us exactly how long it took. And here are my outputs. This is my descriptive statistics. You can see for all the different ones that I chose, the different variables I chose, there's a min, max, median, standard deviation, unique values, and then the mean. The R outputs, and this is where I select all the new windows and I get a new window it's a much more tidy way of seeing this. And then again, it gives me the min, the max, and the median. This is a very nice tool, good visualization. This can be uh, cut and pasted and inserted directly into a report. The more, most important thing is that this can be cut and pasted into a document so, and then you can control the font size. 
and then here's our histograms. And if I want to learn more about how to look at the histograms, I can, I can slide this over, give myself more room to look at, and then I can take a quick tour. And this tells me about the dashboard. data quality is across the bottom. As I roll over each one, it tells me a little bit about the data in each histogram bar. Some of these are much more informative than others. Helps me sort through them. And if I had selected all of my data, I would have many, many, many histograms to look at. And that's actually probably the best place to start is to look at all. And that is how we get our descriptive statistics. We'll do some more data visualizations in the next video. Thanks for watching.